Welcome. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, mobile app testing, right, with, with Dirox. My name is Alejandro Rizzo. I'm a mobile engineer and I have uh, around two years working on Vipron. All of my expertise uh, has been focused on mobile. So let's start. What's the agenda? So we are going to have an introduction to Dirox. Then we are going to see what is gray, bo gray box testing and why. And then we are going to talk about the advantage and limitations about the gray box. Then a little bit about functional and non-functional testing. And then some best practices regarding uh, doing testing and a quick demo that, that I have prepared for, uh, for this video. So what is Dirox? Dirox is like having a virtual assistant that automatically tests your app by making user interactions. Um, it designed it in specific for mobile apps, in, in this case, in specific for React Native. Um, that is a framework that usually is really useful for developing uh, mobile apps uh, to target iOS and Android in specific, right? And what is cool about Dirox is that it's a great box testing model. I'm going to explain a little bit about that term. And regarding Dirox, uh, it communicates directly with the native layers of the mobile devices. And so it's a advantage that it, uh, we have with this framework. And um, we don't um, troubleshoot and with delays between the code that, you, that we um, can handle to, to do the test that we want to all the scenario, the cases that we want to test on our app. And so, yeah, it means that we can mimic real users without any unnecessary delays. Also, uh, I want to mention that uh, Dirox is a framework that is developed by Wix, and yeah, and it's a end-to-end -end, uh, framework. So talking about gray box uh, means that you don't have access to the internal coding, and there is no need to understand the coding. So this is talking about the black, black box, right? But we also have the white box testing that you must work with the internal coding structure and algorithm. So regarding a gray box, which means that we have a kind of, of both uh, parts, right? Talking about the black box that you don't have access to the internal code and with the white one that you have uh, access to, to the code of, of, of the project that we are working on. Uh, so it offers something that is really helpful that you can not only do tests for checking visual stuff of the app, you can also uh, trigger things inside of, of the app. It means uh, things that happens under the hood, right? So it's something that has, uh, that we can, how can I say, that, that we can do more things, right? Just not checking if things are um, visual to the user or flows are working well. So it's a good advantage regarding some other frameworks, right? The purpose of testing specific, specifies to improve the product's quality by using both functional and non-functional testing, right? It saves time from the lengthy and complex process of testing. So when we are talking about functional and non-functional testing, I have um, some their um, list about each one. So for example, we have on the functional right, the unit testing, that basically is when developers write a script for test individual components or individual specific uh, parts of the app or units of, of components or more specific things, right? We also have the smoke testing. There are those that we do after release a build of, of an application or of a project. So in, to ensure that the software the stability is in, intact. We also have the sanity testing uh, that is usually done after the smoke testing, it's something that the team can decide what is. They, they want to do both of that, that kind of, of test. Also, we have the regression testing. Um, this one, we want to ensure that the changes are to the code base. Uh, we are talking about new code, right? Uh, debugging strategies. If these new changes do not disrupt what already exists on, on the project. And also we have the integration testing that basically is to ensure that the individual models work as expected when 
they uh, communicate between them, right? And regarding non-functional, we are talking about performance. When we talk about speed, stability, memory, memory usage, network usage of the, of the project, also about security, also about usability and compatibility, right? That basically to check if our project um, um, accomplish which devices we want to target. So some advantage and limitation regarding the gray box uh, testing that we are talking about about DDoS because it's a framework that allow us to to have some access to to the inter internal code and maybe maybe uh, don't have uh, maybe doesn't have too much knowledge of the code maybe you want to avoid to enter deeper so some of the advantage is that we can improve right our test coverage. Uh, efficient use of resources and area detection of defects, right? Because uh, we can access more deeper and we can understand flows, uh, also the architecture of the app and try to detect things that maybe are not working well. And some limitations, um, sorry, um, that you have some limit on, on, uh, on the code, some access limit, and also, we have some dependency on system knowledge, right? Maybe it's a limitation for people that are more, more mostly focused on, on the QA side because they need to start uh, learning about the project and how, how is the structure, how it works. And maybe it can take some time to, to them to try writing, to start writing cases, right, about it best. So it is one of the limitations that we have with, with data. And maybe they those, those people need some help from the developers to, to know how to do some things. So we also have another framework that is Appium. We have some advantage or characteristics for, <laughs> of each one. We can see that data has a, a lot of because the main difference between both, Appium is one that is really used uh, nowadays, but uh, maybe not the problem, but one advantage that Appium has that is more for general purposes, used for native application, hybrid application, also web applications. And um, But Dirox, as I mentioned before, is fully focused for, for mobile and mainly for React Native applications. Right? With Appium, we, for example, we can target uh, application that were made on Flutter, for example. So let's see a quick demo. Let's see some step uh, for setting up Dirox, right? With these some quickly steps. There are some prerequisites. Uh, we need to have a MAUX uh, i Sierra. We also need a version of X code about uh, number 10 and also have a uh, Umbrew install, right? Also, we need to know uh, about this version that you're seeing, the number eight. And also we need to have installed Apple's and later utilities, right? Because Dirox needs some uh, communications in this part to target in iOS. And yeah, we have some comments that we can follow, we can uh, follow all these steps on the Dirox uh, documentation. Basically, it's something really straightforward. Um, yeah, we can install Dirox, right? In our terminal, there is a comment. We, it depends, right, we, if we are starting a React Native program, uh, project from scratch or we already have a, a project, then uh, Dirox needs a configuration file. We need to name it as dirox.config.ts. In this file, we usually put some configuration regarding uh, how which configuration of our application we are targeting. If we are in the book mode or, or we are in release mode, also we can define the different devices that we want to to target. In this case, we are seeing that say it's an iPhone 11. And also we need to define those paths, right? It depends on, on the location of our application. Then we can start uh, writing some tests, right? On, on Dirox website, you can see an, a small example. Um, in the example, we can see that we are reloading the React Native before each uh, test case that we have. And we have uh, at the bottom, says should have welcome screen is one of the test cases. And as an example, right, in this case, um, 
we are searching for an element that has an ID, welcome, and we are expecting that that element is visible. So basically, that's the way that, that we can read that. That's a simple example. Let me try to show you something else. Something that we can achieve also with, uh, with Direct is we can interact with Cucumber. Cucumber basically is a framework that allow us to create um, tests, those tests that, that we already coded in JavaScript um, in a more readable way, right? For for maybe tester or the other people that maybe can read and maybe understand better what, what we are testing, right? So this is an example that we have on one of our applications on Wiprem. You can read it and maybe you have a better idea of right, what's going on. And it's an example that we are going to See in a couple of seconds. Okay, this is an example of code, right? Uh, basically, we are going to see a demo of an application that we are going to mimic a user that navigates to through a onboarding process, and we are going to create something in, inside some of the screens, and, and that's it. So basically, you can see some of those steps in, in the code. Uh, Edox offers some commands that allow us to wait for application to have some elements, right? Visible or exist, or we have a lot of um, alternatives to, to use. So for example, in the second line, you can say that says uh, that we are searching an element by text. We are searching, hi, I am Lorem. We are searching that text uh, on application and we have a timeout of six seconds. So we are waiting for six seconds to Dirox to find that element by text. Why six seconds? Because maybe there are animations or there are transitions that uh, can happen. It's something that as the developer, we can decide, right? Why we are assigning a, a, a timeout. And also allow us to, to avoid some issues that maybe are things that are not reflect at the moment, right? Because the analysis different things that can happen during uh, the user is using the app. So, okay, let's see that, that example. Okay, let's see the video. Let me just share that video. This is the video. Let's start. So what we're going to, to see is the example that I mentioned before, right? Uh, that is a user that is a new user because we are going to create an account. I changed some labels because my goal is not to, to to show some things about uh, the client, that kind of stuff. So we have some loading text during the, the process. So right now we are entering in, in a username, right? We are navigating to the onboarding process. We are checking if some buttons exist or not, if, or if some labels are present or not during the process. In this case, we are adding an, an item that the user is able to do on the onboarding process. So you can say this says that we already pass all the, all the steps. So yeah, basically that Dirox help us to to mimic right those um, um actions that the user can do on the application, and maybe we can decide which are like the more important parts of the application that we want to make sure that are working, and also we can integrate uh, Dirox with some CI CD um, tools to make this uh, more uh, automated. That maybe a new release, we can run all the tests and check that the main functionality is working. Or maybe every time that we are merging to develop or maybe into the main branch. So we, we can decide all those, all those kind of stuff to write and to improve right, our de develop of the product that, that we are you know, working, right? To ensure the quality of, of that product. That's it. Thank you for, for your assistance.